Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, data guy here, now with a fancy schmancy new green screen. Um, and so last week we had a video for you on, hey, what is better to use for retail workloads? Databricks versus Airflow. And I just tried to run through you know, how you would use both in isolation. But that's not really a realistic use case for the enterprise uh, workload. Most of the times you're actually using Databricks and Airflow um, together uh, rather than just one or the other entirely separately. And that's because they work really well together. Um, you, know, you use Airflow to orchestrate everything around your Databricks transformations, and then you use Databricks to run those really high-powered analytics processing workloads that Spark is really designed for on big sets of data. Um, and then you have Airflow kind of give you that management layer so you don't have to go into Databricks to monitor that. You can monitor it via Airflow while you know you can also see, hey, you know, what's the status of my API jobs that are pulling it in? Uh, is it being saved to that database correctly? Um, and really every step um, of the workflow rather than, you know, hey, I have to go look at each of these in isolation. Um, so today I wanted to show you exactly that, um, how you can build an end-to-end -end, uh, analytics pipeline with Databricks and Airflow together. Um, so when we're done, you'll have a DAG that's going to look something like this, where we're ingesting some tables of data, uh, selecting some countries of them for the climate data, uh, saving those files then to an S3 bucket. Uh, then we are going to use Databricks to first launch Databricks uh, workflow, join that data, transform it, and then delete those ingestion files from our S3 bucket, load our data um, into our end database, um, and then create a graph uh, for our analytics dashboard um, on that climate data. So all this code, everything I will link in the description below. Um, but without further ado, let's pop open VS Code and get into it. So the first thing we're going to be doing, as we do with all of our DAGs, is set the stage with all of our fun packages and libraries. Um, so here I just also wrote down kind of a quick outline of what we're doing here, which is just running, loading some local files into a relational database. Uh, in this case, it can be Postgres. Then we're going to run a transformation to select information from just one country, uh, load those results into an S3 bucket as CSV files. In this case, the information also is solar, wind, um, and uh, geothermal energy percentages. Uh, then we're going to transform that uh, data after we aggregate it. Um, and then we are going to create a visualization um, and we're just going to save it as a local PNG file. But, you know, in real life, you probably bring it into something like Tableau or Power BI or whatever. Um, so now quick look at the libraries we're bringing in. Uh, so classic DAG decorator, date time. Um, we're using the Astro SDK for uh, the AQL operator, file operator, table operator, just to make it easier to pass uh, data between tasks and just execute SQL transformations on data without needing to use specific operators. Um, then we're also going to bring in the uh, Databricks notebook workflow um, and operators. Uh, so this is just going to allow us to create a Databricks no work or notebook or kick off an existing one. Um, and this Databricks workflow task group is how we're going to create that, um, you know, it's kind of set that blue box in the DAG view um, of just our condensed Databricks uh, tasks. Then we're going to have for our visualizations um, and data manipulation, we're going to have Pandas, as always, uh, Seaborn for um, just some of its analysis tools, and then Matplot um, to actually create that uh, pie plot, uh, so that end graph that we'll create. Um, and so after we're done with that, we will have um, some variables we will need to set. So because we're connecting to Databricks, S3, um, there's a couple or quite a few variables we need to set. Um, Databricks requires a lot of configuration when you're managing it from Airflow. Um, I mean, it requires a lot of configuration managing it internally, but you know you have to bring all that into your uh, DAG code. So here you'll need to have you know your country, Databricks login email, S3 bucket, AWS region that you're going to be in, um, your Databricks notebooks. So you'll need to create these ahead of time, but here we have, or not really, these will just create it for you. Um, so here you have your notebook path to join data. So users, login email. Um, so this is why you need to import your login email so you can use it for Jinja templating um, to just dynamically create that, um, create that pathing, sorry. And then you will have your solar CSV path, hydro CSV path, wind CSV path. Um, and these are all just CSVs that are in this local Airflow um, folder. Uh, then you'll also have um, your 
S3 <laughs> folder path, your uh, country subset, your uh, transform data, just different configurations for where your S3 uh, details are loaded, um, and then the result file. So this is where you know, you're going to store the end result after it comes out of Databricks, um, your job cluster key, so whatever cluster you're using within Databricks. Um, and then you'll also <laughs> need to set your Databricks connection ID your AWS connection ID and your database connection. Um, in this case, I'll be using a Postgres database, but this can really be any database um, because, or relational database, because we're using the Astro SDK. So you can just hot swap databases in. You don't have to use like specific database operators. Um, and that's why I'm using it. So here you have the S3 folder country subset as well. Um, so just a lot of variables that we'll use throughout the DAG um, just for configuring different destinations. And then after we've gotten all those, we have one more. Uh, beefy config, which is the J Databricks job cluster spe uh, spec. So here we need to pass the exact, so Databricks on its own doesn't like implicitly start up a cluster for you. You have to provision it through an external cloud service you uh, authenticate with Databricks. Um, so in this case for AWS, we are going to just give it all the different cluster details, the cluster name, Spark version, um, some configuration specific for AWS, um, where it's on demand, uh, availability spot with fallbacks. So this is just defining, hey, what kind of resources do we want to provision spot or on demand resources, uh, bid price percent. So again, just pricing config to say, hey, we'll only accept compute within this range. Um, and then down here you have your node type, spike environment or spark environment variables. So just is installing um, any libraries you want to, you're going to need onto this job cluster. In this case, we'll definitely need Python. Um, enable elastic disk, data security mode, uh, and whatever runtime and number of workers. So we're just gonna have one, it's pretty lightweight, um, but obviously in production probably would want more. Um, and then that is all of our variable set, very exhausting list, uh, but now we're all ready to start creating our DAG. So here we have our first transformation, um, and that is just selecting um, from any, uh, select everything from every table where the entity is our specified country. Um, so we want to get all the information about all their electricity sources, wherever, in any table where they are the country of, of selection. Um, so that is just kind of what we're doing there. Um, as I also adjust my green screen in the back. Um, and so pretty simple SQL slot statement, um, just, you know, a little ginger templating thrown in there. Um, so what this will do is just return us that table that's going to pull given, you know, that country. Then after we're done with that, what we will do is for this AQL data frame, um, we can create a graph. So this is actually what's going to happen at the end of the pipeline. Once we've aggregated that data, um, we are going to create a graph um, showing the percentage of solar, hydro, wind in a particular country um, over time x. Um, and the Y label is just percentage of combined um, of the three different energy sources. And then it's going to save it in our local directory um, in the include directory. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. Then after that, what we'll do, so we're done with our AQL transformations. Um, and so because those are defined via the task API, we define them outside of our DAG. Don't have to, but it just kind of makes sense. Um, and then here we have our DAG definition. So nothing fancy here, schedule none, catch a false, start date, whatever you want it to be. Um, and so what we'll do here is create a load file operator from the Astro SDK to bring in those three different CSVs I showed you that are in our local um, include file directory. And so we'll do that um, with dynamic task mapping. So I know when you saw that transformation task, you're like, whoa, but I thought he was telling us to collect multiple tables. Well, we are using dynamic task mapping because I love this stuff because it means I can write shorter tasks and then just pass a list of variables. Um, so here we're using dot partial for task ID just because we want that to be common across all tasks. Um, and then our expand KORGs are our input file um, being that uh, solar CSV path. So here we're intaking um, our ingestion. So bringing in that load. And so this is how we're going to bring in each file. Um, so this actually isn't, sorry, I mixed it up. That's the next one where we dynamically map it. Uh, this one is actually just loading in each file into our database. Um, so you can hear that's why I defined a DB connection ID to imply that you can use any database you want for this. Um, in my particular use or situation, I just wink, wink, nudge, nudge, use the local Postgres database because I didn't want to spin up a new one, uh, but you can use any database here and it will save it the same. Um, and here you're just saying table, name, connection ID, um, and the path is just to our local uh, CSV path. 
So after we've got our data loaded in our um, database, that's where the data goes, wouldn't it be? Um, we will then select some countries from there. Um, and so here for, or not really select countries, but we're gonna select all the data for that particular country from each of those three tables. So here we're doing a little uh, dynamic task output mapping. Um, so what we're doing here is we have for each table in table X, um, so that's Lambda X, um, we want to map the output. So we're gonna map the top output of this table, which is just wherever the table reference is, um, and read it in as the ingestion table. Um, so it looks a, bit, a little bit weird here. It's not weird. Um, it's just, this is how you can dynamically map the output of one task um, and then bring it into another task. Um, and then we're again going to say, and the reason we're also doing this is so we can use that output twice to also define the name of the output table. Um, so in this case, it's gonna be, you know, wind, hydro, solar, um, underscore country. Um, so actually no, it'll just be the name of the country, underscore uh, country, um, but really kind of weird writing, but notation, but a really powerful tool um, and not actually that complicated once you get into the weeds with it. Um, so now we've selected our countries, um, we've got them dynamically mapped, we've got those um, clean or clean data sets of just, you know, the information of each of those electricity powers for each country. Um, so now what we're going to do is just use dynamic mapping one more time um, to save those files to S3. So if exists replace, we just overwrite any pre-existing data. Um, and then again, reason that expand kwargs country tables dot map where we're taking the input file um, is X. So the, it's going to when you see X here, this is just think of this as the output of select countries. Um, so this is going to be that table name um, for the particular country. Uh, and then it is just going to use a file path. So export to file operator um, to save it into our S3 bucket. Um, so this is where we're using that S for SDK file to say, hey, we're actually not exporting to a local file. We're exporting it to an external file. Um, and this is again where the Astro SDK kind of eliminates me having to uh, write a Python task that would just do this um, as kind of a wrap around a boot to three uh, operator here. Um, so here we're saving those files to S3 in our uh, country subset. Um, and now they are ready for Databricks to bring them in and start doing our transformations on them. Um, so what we'll do to get started with that is create our Databricks task group. Um, so here we have data Bricks workflow task group, uh, group ID, Databricks connection ID. So this will just be inherited by every task. So we don't have to keep setting the Databricks connection ID um, and the cluster spec again. So we don't have to keep setting it for each uh, Databricks task. Um, so after we've gotten our with our task group defined, then we can start adding some tasks to it um, with task group notebook one, our Databricks notebook operator. Um, and so what this is going to be doing is just joining our data together. Um, so here we have our Databricks notebook path and what's happening in this notebook is just a SQL statement that's joining these three data sets together. Um, Databricks connection ID, job cluster key, again, all of these we have already set. Um, and then what you'll have um, is your second Databricks notebook operator that is going to be transforming the data. Um, so if we go here, Databricks notebook operator, Two uh, is just transform the data, connection ID, Databricks, uh, notebook path, transform, S3 bucket, Databricks job cluster key, just configurations to know where it's going to actually be pulling that data in from um, and what notebook to use to actually transform that data. And just so you can see what's actually happening in there. Um, so within Databricks, you're going to want to create two notebooks. Um, and these are, again, going to be added in the file connection or the link below with all the code um, and have these to actually create that data or pull that data in, transform it, um, and then save it out again. Um, so you can see a little bit complex here um, to handle S3, but this is just saving it in, uh, creating new data frames, processing it, um, and then bringing it back into S3. Um, so after you have done that as well, um, you will then just set a quick, simple relationship. Notebook one goes into notebook two. Um, we're gonna join the data, then transform it. And then once we've, now we've gotten our data breaks task defined, so we've gotten that transformed data, it's been ingested, it's been transformed. We are also going to want to delete those ingestion files uh, just so we don't have, we're not paying for storage of ingestion files we're not using um, within S3. Um, and then what we will do is uh, load our CSV file, creating the results of that transformation into our relational database. 
Um, so here, what we're doing is aqlo file taking that databricks result path, um, which again was predefined up there, um, into or using AWS Connection ID, and again putting that file into whatever database you're using to store it. Again, I'm just using a local Postgres. Um, and then what we'll do is define all the relationships uh, between everything within the stack. Um, so here we have just kind of a grouping here where we're going to save files to S3. Um, then it is going to reference that task group. Then we are going to load file to database as well as delete those ingestion files. And then we are going to create uh, a graph. And so you might be asking, well, we're kind of missing a few tasks here uh, that I saw, and you're right. We also are going to add a AQL cleanup. So this is just a task that's going to delete any temporary tables in the relational database that were created in this graph, um, and then initialize this tag. And the reason why we didn't have to define the relationships between these first three tasks is because they're each referencing the prior task data um, using dynamic task, or not dynamic task, we're going to be using the Taskful API. And because they're doing that, it's going to automatically um, establish that relationship in the Airflow UI so you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. Um, and that is all it is on the code side of things. So now I'm going to run it and I'm going to show you what this graph looks like um, on the other end. So here you have the you know successfully completed DAG run. Um, and you can see, you know, super standard stuff here, just successful workflow. Uh, but the result, which will be saved in your local directory if you download this and run it, um, is this neat little path where it'll show you the percent uh, solar, hydro, and wind within Switzerland, which is really delightful. And that's because my colleague Tamara Fingerlin actually built this repo um, and she is from Switzerland. So great, great stuff here. And uh, Go try it out. There's a super well-written guide um, and you can watch the law or read it along with this video uh, to understand every step of the way uh, and learn how you can use Databricks and Airflow in conjunction with each other to really create the best possible uh, Airflow pipelines. Um, and so that's all I have for you today. Uh, so hope you have a good one. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And Data Guy out. Peace.